Hello, my friend. Let's talk about three things to avoid when sending exhibition proposals to galleries or institutions. Well, hello, my friend. Welcome back to Breakfast with Sergio. Super happy to be here with you. Welcome to my breakfast table on my plate today, two delicious crepes with some um, fruits, which are awesome. And uh, I'm ready. Yeah, this will give me a great start of my day. Well, my friend, you know, lately I've been seeing some problems with artists submitting proposals for exhibitions. So I wanted to address that topic here on this breakfast with Sergio and give you like three things you should not do. This, this is not a three things that you should do. It's three things that you should not do, right? When sending an exhibition proposal to a gallery, a museum, an institution, right? Something that uh, I've been very passionate about talking about proposals, helping artists write amazing proposals. Maybe you have taken my course, The Seven Steps to Creating a Killer Exhibition Proposal. If you are in my academy, the Art Next Level Academy, you have access to it. If not, if you want to check it out, it's also available in Udemy, udemy.com. But anyway, I want to talk about, again, three things to avoid. The first one, my friend, is when you write an exhibition proposal, right? And you're writing that awesome introduction letter that the person on the other side is going to see first before they look at your images, before they look at, you know, your uh, work and your ideas, this awesome show that you have. You know, the first thing is that letter of introduction. Pay a lot of attention to that letter. Make it individual for every place that you send it. One of the biggest kind of uh, problems that artists make, and here's the first one, is that they make the letter and they just change the name on the top and they send it to all the galleries that they want to send it to or institutions. And so the proposal letter, the actual, you know, introduction letter looks exactly the same for everybody. You know, you should, yeah, of course, you want it to look, um, you know, consistent to the rest of your proposal, but when I'm talking about what you write on that introduction letter is very important or the email that you're going to be sending out. What I want you to do, the mistake to avoid is to just carbon copy per se or copy and paste and use exactly the same wording for the whole, for every institution or for every gallery. What you should do, my friend, is when you start your letter of introduction, right, about your intention with this uh, proposal, right, introducing yourself and your idea, is always, always think about also the gallery that you're sending it to. A proposal is not just about yourself, it's also about, you know, it's a partnership about, you know, or between you the artist and the gallery, right? Every exhibition is a partnership between the two, two parties, the gallery and the artist. So when you write that letter, make sure that you talk about that as well. Make sure that you acknowledge that you know who they are, that you, you acknowledge that you know what kind of programming they have, you know, what are the things that you know about them, right? So it doesn't look like you just put this proposal and you send it to 10 different galleries and everybody got the same thing. You know, pay a lot of attention again to that introduction, how you introduce yourself, you know. Again, think about it. it's not, this proposal is not just about me. It's also about, you know, I'm proposing a collaboration with the gallery who's gonna be hosting my show. So uh, you want to start by talking a little bit about them, right? Make it about them, right, as well. And that's a great way, you know, to start your introduction because allows or lets the gallery or whoever is reviewing your proposal, the curators or the committee, lets them know you know, that you are familiar with them and with, with what they are and what they do. And therefore, you know, you have put a lot of more thought about this as a possible uh, exhibition that would be great for who they are and what they do. So first uh, mistake to avoid. Second one, my friend, is to uh, don't send the uh, proposal through the appropriate channels. What do I mean by that? I get a lot of artists who send me for example, to my Facebook messaging or to my Instagram uh, message, they send me a bunch of pictures or pictures of their proposal and they say, sir, you can have a show uh, either for my gallery or for the art center where I curate here in Chicago. And the answer is always no, right? That's not a proper way to ask for a show. First of all, I don't even know who you are. Maybe we are fa friends in Facebook or on Instagram. But that's not, that doesn't work that way, right? That's not a professional way. That's not the appropriate channel how to pursue, you know, an exhibition, right? What you do, what you're doing if you're doing that is just getting, uh, you know, kind of the other person say, well, but wait a minute, you know, um, that's not a proper way to ask. So, you know, you want to always find out 
if you want to send a proposal to somebody, you always want to find out, you know, what is the best way to send your proposal so it arrives to the uh, right hands who are going to see that proposal. And that's when you ask, right? So instead of just sending automatically a bunch of pictures or your proposal as an attachment, you know, right off the gate, you, know, you can ask, hey, I've been following, again, just like the same advice I gave you earlier. I've been following your account, I've been following your gallery, I've been familiar with the shows, blah, 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 right? You make a nice introduction, not too long, you know, just a few words, and then say, hey, you know, I would love to submit for you a proposal. You know, do you accept proposals? Who should I send it to? In other words, you're asking, what is the proper way, the proper channel in which I can send you this information? So make sure that you can review it. That's all you are asking and then once they give you an answer then follow those instructions right which is so different from just bombarding somebody with a bunch of images and saying hey do you, can you give me a show and believe it or not i get those messages you know quite often so uh, it happens and hopefully my friend if you're watching breakfast with sergio you've been watching breakfast with sergio for a while i hope it's not you right you know much better than that all right the third thing my friend is to really really pay attention to the visuals really pay attention to the visuals in your proposal, right? The visuals are super important, right? They are the one of the biggest parts of the proposal. So if you have a number of works that you are putting in the proposal, if it's a PDF, for example, don't cram them all in one page or 10 in one page, because by the time, you know, you look at that proposal and that PDF, you know, the artwork is about this big and it's just really impossible to see. Yes, you can combine maybe two or three on one page, but then, the words that are the most important that you feel like these are like your most important words in the proposal, maybe give them a solo page to those, right? Maybe you can have the proposal where three pages are just full image and then the other, an additional two or three with more words that are combined together in a way that looks nice, right? The whole the idea of the proposal is not to display your amazing uh, graphic design skills. It's about the art. So the more simple, the better, right? Stay away from background colors that are, you know, pull too much attention, textures, keep it clean. It's better a white background with amazing pictures that very elaborate, beautiful graphic design with not so good pictures, right? Um, or that are stealing away from your pictures. So keep it clean, keep it very simple, and that's going to help you to get better results when you're sending those proposals out to other people. So my friend, again, I hope this Breakfast with Sergio episode kind of helps you as you begin the year 2020, and maybe some of you are preparing proposals this year and so on. Again, check out my course, Seven Steps to Creating a Killer Exhibition Proposal. Uh, that that uh, course has been now for like three or four years, and it's amazing. I mean, I, I get messages from artists who say, Sergio, I took the course and I got my first show, or I got a bigger show, or why not? You know, it's really cool. And you can find it at udemy.com. But my friend, again, uh, if this episode was helpful, if those three things, now that you know to avoid, uh, you know, were helpful for you, I hope that you also share this episode with your friends so that they can also get better proposals in 2020 and they get better chances to get better and more important shows for their own art career. Have a great day. Thank you for watching and we'll see you later. Goodbye.